Hello and welcome to a special edition of Ask a Veterinarian. I'm Dr. Brian. Today I'm going to be talking about how to survive vet school. Now my time in school is a little bit dated, so I'll primarily be trying to stick to the things uh, that are timeless, the things that I wish I had been told or importantly had remembered better. Now, I have a special request with this video. If you know someone in vet school, please, please share it with them. If you know someone thinking about vet school or about to start, Again, please share it with them. If you know, uh, if you uh, are in vet school, then first off, congrats, seriously. Um, please watch this whole video. I know you're pressed for time. I know you're feeling the pinch, but bookmark it and, and remember to watch it at three points before each semester, halfway through each semester, like after midterms, when you're hip deep in the suck, and then at the end of each semester, I'm really hoping that this video can provide you some clarity, some perspective, and especially some hope. I'm asking you to circle back to this video because as I sat down to think about what I wanted to tell you, I thought about how many times I would have needed to be reminded of this and how easy it would have been to, to get lost. Now, I'll start with some, some shifts in the academic mindset. In one sense, you've already made it over the biggest academic hurdle you got in. I'm sure you've already heard this lots of times, but vet school is one of the hardest programs to get into, and it's just because it's a numbers game. You had to be at the top of your class to get in. In undergrad, one or two C's in the wrong classes could kill you, but you made it, you could do the work, study, and do well on tests. So what does that work? What does it look like in vet school? How does that work? I refer to it as a shift from the top of the class or straight A mentality and this can be tough and we'll talk about it at several points through the video. Um, in undergrad, you were among the elite, the best, or you wouldn't have gotten in. But guess what? So is basically everybody else at vet school. You don't stand out any longer. Personally, I've never felt dumber than when I was in vet school. I'm not joking, straight up dumb. Vet school is full of brilliant folks and you will be surrounded by insanely smart people who can have an ability to, to learn at rates and in volumes that is out of this world. So let's talk specifically uh, about first year. Uh, the goal of first year is to get everyone on the same page. You'll have people coming from different backgrounds, different careers, and first year and especially first semester is essentially intensive undergrad. For some, it will just be a refresher. For others, it may be the most intensive semester you've ever had. Either way, it will be a massive dump of information like nothing you've encountered and the speed and the volume of info that's coming at you is astounding and it doesn't stop. So how do you get through it? Focus on finding a rhythm for school, for studying, for work, for family and socializing that works for you. Understand that this will likely change every semester. Find friends and groups that are mutually supporting in life and in class. Important, find confidence in yourself. Uh, maybe not that you're gonna crush school, but realize that you can take it a class at a time and a test at a time and get through. That is truly all that matters. You will, repeat, will be stressed in ways that you would expect and in ways that you wouldn't. Um, I think it's pretty common for second years to act far superior to first years because they're just way less stressed and god you first years are wound so tight. But guess what? They were too. They just figured out how to survive and you will too. Think of vet school uh, like four years of OCHEM. You may not get the grades you want, but all you gotta do is pass. A's are awesome, but just focus on passing. I'll say a few more things about academics and then we'll, we'll move on. Tying into my last point, and this is huge, just study to pass, not for deep understanding. This may sound counterintuitive or like some dumb short-term survival strategy, but stay with me. You cannot learn, really learn, the sheer amount of information that you're trying to shove into your brain. There's no time for a deep dive, there's too much and it's coming too fast. 
the important stuff I promise you will see over and over because it's important. You will learn from sheer repetition. Let your default mindset be regurged, pass the test, and purge. And this is coming from someone who learns slowly and really likes deep dives. Trust me, take the test, get a drink, take five, whether it's minutes or hours, whatever you need, and dive back into the material for whatever test is coming next down the pipe. You will get good at this. Now on to the academic backgrounds and what that may mean for you. And if you're going straight from vet school from undergrad, which is most of you, good. You're legged up for the academic load, all you've known is the academic world, and you're obviously good at it. That's an incredible advantage. On the front end, cut back on the extracurricular activities, just cut back on some of the fun, just focus on school, whatever that looks like, and you'll be fine. And a warning to you, because of your age and your limited background, you'll be more likely to lose perspective and just get swallowed up. Now, if you're a non-traditional, older, second career person, this guy, good. Hopefully you've got a good perspective on life and you're less likely to get swallowed up. Um, you will likely struggle with being treated like a child um, and the loss of freedom that comes with it. Nobody cares what you did before. Nobody cares how much you made. You're no longer special. Now moving on to kind of that 30,000 foot level. Some of these may be hard to hear, but I promise I'm not just trying to be a poopy pants dream crusher. This is the reality, and the sooner and faster that you can accept it, the faster you can find your best way through this high-stress dumpster fire. This first one was, was a painful lesson for quite a few of, of our classmates. It's the dichotomy that the system is literally set up for you that vet school and vet hospitals exist for you and they do not care about you. You're finally a vet student. They have a ceremony where you got a coat. It's real. It's starting. And the professors will even start calling you the C word. Not that one. Colleague. But you're just a vet student. Nobody cares. So is everybody else. The machine rolls on. From their perspective, there's a new crop every year. This is your whole world, but you're just a tiny part of theirs. First year, guess what else those profs are doing? They're teaching a lot of undergrads and doing research of their own. As you get more into the clinicals, guess what the clinicians are doing? Clinics and their own research. They have to come down and give lectures to the vet kids sometimes, but that is not the main part of their job. You'll have some instructors who are great because they care about their teaching craft. That's awesome. Appreciate it. But don't confuse that for concern for your feedback or your individual learning style. You may even have some rotations and some clinicians that are fantastic and genuinely care about your learning. Enjoy those rotations, but don't expect it. I would say this next point is, is one of the biggest um, vet school is all consuming even though it's finite it is four years five I think if you're in the UK that's a long ass time there is a lot of life that happens during those years <sighs> a warning I'm about to go dark but just stay with me your world will morph into this small boring, slow, overwhelming, high stress, high speed, test upon test upon test, monster. Meanwhile, people outside are having kids, getting married, getting divorced, buying houses, going on vacations, having awesome medical breakthroughs, and that one job that you know was designed just for you went to somebody else. Now, there may be a panic that the world is passing you by and all you can do is walk, is sit and watch, helpless and missing opportunity after opportunity from this hellhole. Vet school is all consuming. It will mess with you. It will change you. 
it will be some of the best times and it won't be some of the worst. You will be a different person coming out. Your significant other, your family, your kids, your friends, everyone will have changed. Some will be better, some worse, but everyone will have changed. Just think of it like three reality shows. Big Brother, The Apprentice, and Alone. You may become best friends. You may have painful moments and become snarling enemies. Uh, there's competition for limited spots. The pricks become nice and the sweet ones will cut your throats or do incredibly selfish things. There will be crushing doubt and desperate loneliness. Some you will be able to express and some you won't. And through it all, you can't escape. Um, there is no getting off the island, uh, not for four years. But it does end. And I say that on a very serious note because suicide's a thing in vet school. This is a tough four years. This is why I want you to please remember to watch this. I want you to remember that this is a universal truth. You are not immune. And most dangerously, you will struggle at times to maintain perspective. And this freaking monster will devour your soul and not look back if you're not careful. You have to fight to maintain. You have to find some escapes. Find a few friends. Find a way. If you're hurting or struggling for the love of Pete, talk to somebody. This is coming from someone who despises therapists and counselors, but if that's your jam, frickin' find one. Mental health has become a trendy thing, and I think you would be hard-pressed at m most vet schools to not have a mental health professional close at hand, and maybe even free of charge. If you're more like me, go spend some time with the people and the places that inspired you to get here to begin with. Older vets can be great for this. They've been through that same journey, and they can give you that hope and perspective that you don't even know you need. Go to the people and the places that you want to land once you're once this, this thing has ended. And again, it will end. Vet school is merely a stepping stone. Uh, it's a big one, but it's just a stepping stone. It is a means to an end. Go touch where you want to be. Remind yourself of the bigger world that's out there and why you started down this journey. Those people and those reasons may change through school. That's okay, and that's normal. Personally, when I was in several of my darkest points in vet school, um, what what saved me was actually looking up and out uh, and investing in some of uh, the people around me, mostly my classmates, but even some of the vet, uh, the vet techs and the other hospital staff that you're going to, to run in with, into. It will get you out of your bubble of impending doom and help you to realize that as cheesy as it sounds, everyone is struggling with something. You're not broken. <clears throat> You're not weird. <clears throat> You're not weak. It's vet school. While this journey is uniquely yours, <clears throat> and at times you do have to go it alone, understand that you are not alone <clears throat> okay moving on from that rabbit hole of death um, let's talk about a future career mindset let's start with some upbeat stuff um, <clears throat> doors will be open to you that weren't before in this sense you are special you're kind of in the club um, there are tens of thousands of pre-bit kids you just get lost in the mix but there are only a few hundred vet kids because of this there are a lot more opportunities and interactions that will pop up than you'd ever get as a pre-vet take advantage of them if you have a pretty good idea um, of career path going in good use your time in vet school to to confirm that again as a vet student you'll have access to situations that you didn't before and you can use those to verify or clarify uh, what you actually want to do. If you don't have a clue what you actually want to do, uh, good. Most of your classmates don't either, even if they say they do. You are about to have a major life transition. 
make the most of your time to start ruling in or ruling out career fields, specialties, or even just locations. If nothing else, figure out what you definitely don't want to do. Don't, don't confuse vet school with a career as a vet. It's a unique, almost artificial world um, that can allow you previews of what is out there. Just because you like something in class or on clinics doesn't mean you'll actually like it when you're out in the trenches day in and day out. Ask hard questions, especially of yourself. Okay, so wrapping up. Having a DVM degree and a license opens up incredible doors. It's a passport to so many careers. Because it has such a restricted entry, you will always find yourself with options just because of those three little letters after your name. But you have to get through. So here's your order of operations for survival. First, freaking pass. Pay the damn price, say no to some fun, maybe even a lot of fun, but don't you dare fail out. You will miss out on opportunities. It's okay. There's always more. Trust me. Next, focus on stability. Those important inner things and resiliency. Just outlast the bastards. Next, look up and out. Preserve your soul and help others in the process. Um, next would be just narrow your focus. Figure out what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Lastly, understand that you are responsible for your education. Vet school will give you a diploma, not an education. You are responsible for your knowledge and skills for your entire career, and that starts now. The more you can learn and practical hands-on experience you can get in, and especially out of class, the shorter your learning curve and the easier start you'll have to this career. It will astound you, even after a few years though, how much you have forgotten from vet school. And guess what? It's because you've actually learned how to be a vet rather than a vet student. I think it was Einstein who said something along the lines of education is what's left over after you've forgotten everything that you learned in school. Know that you are about to enter one of the roughest career fields out there right now. There are a lot of reasons that we're the best at killing ourselves. Um, the best things you can do for yourself, for those around you, for your career, is to take the time, uh, make the most of your time in vet school. Remember and hold on to those important things. Uh, try to limit the damage that school does to you and set yourself up to have the fastest recovery back to the outside world. Now the good news, you are likely coming out into a desperately imploding career field. When we were graduating, the industry was finally recovering from the 08 crash and new grads were happy just to find a decent job that paid more than KFC. Not kidding. However, the industry is more than recovered and hospitals are desperate uh, for vets. On top of that, COVID has broken many vets and techs. Um, they are leaving the field at a catastrophic rate. Hospitals are going out of their mind looking for anyone. Nobody cares where you went to school, what your class rank was, your externships, your club memberships, or your wet labs. They need docs badly. Even if the economy crashes like it did before, so many people have left the field that it will take a very long time to recover. Now, I, I, I say that so that you know what you're getting into and to tell you that again, the better mental, emotional, physical shape you are in following vet school, the better odds you have of succeeding in what can be an amazing career. Thanks for watching. Please remember to watch this again. Best of luck, study hard, drink reasonable amounts, have fun, and be good vets.